Okay, AP Calc students, uh, welcome back. I am going to work through the solution of Unit 1, Free Response Question Set A, but this is Question 2. So both Question 1 and Question 2 will be in your total combined score for that Free Response Set A. Alrighty, again, always take a moment to read the directions. These are some of the important parts, in my opinion. And always make sure that you're uh, reading those directions and comfortable with the format of the AP exam. Okay, take a moment, re-familiarize yourself with this question too. Let f be the function defined by f of x. Uh, we're going to justify that finding a and b, where a and b are constants. The graph of f has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. And f has removable discontinuity at x equals 2. One thing about the AP exam is they never give you anything that you don't need. So anything that you're given, you're going to use in your solution somehow. Alrighty, when I see removable discontinuity at x equals 2, this is just what I think of. That means that that function must have a factor, if x equals 2 is removable, goes into a factor of x minus 2, x minus 2. So this is just my thinking. I have to have that common factor of x minus 2 in the top and the bottom for removable discontinuity. All right, so let's look at part A for this question. It was four points for part A. Uh, they tell us what A and B are. Please show that A equals 6 and B equals negative 13. Okay, for the sake of time, this is how I would start part A. If F has a horizontal asymptote at Y equals 3, then the limit as X approaches infinity horizontal asymptote of that function AX squared plus BX plus 2 over 2x squared minus 8 would be equal to 3. You are given one point if you have this limit in your work. Some of us did not. Okay, so that's what that horizontal asymptote implies. That's the calculus of it. Okay, once we have this limit set up, then that reminds us that the horizontal asymptote, y equals 3, will be the ratio of the leading coefficients. The ratio of the leading coefficients. And here's my justification. I'm showing all of my work. I might say, since, remember the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. That's when the horizontal asymptote was equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients. So that ratio, a over 2, has to equal 3. And that implies that a is equal to 6. Okay, This got you one point as well. Alrighty, so we found that a is equal to 6. Now we have to find b. No, we don't have to find b. We just have to show that b is equal to negative 13. Okay, so now we're going to show that b is equal to negative 13. Since f has removable discontinuity at x equals 2, I think x minus 2 is a factor of both the numerator and the denominator. The AP solution said it this way. So, when x is equal to 2, if x minus 2 is a factor, that means that the numerator, ax squared plus bx plus 2, if x minus 2 is a factor, then when x equals 2, the numerator must equal 0, if that is a factor. a is equal to 6. When x is equal to 2, I can solve for b. What is that? 2 squared is 4 times 6 is 24, plus 2b plus 2 is equal to 0. 
2b plus 26 is equal to 0, 2b must equal negative 26, and b must equal negative 13. Okay. They gave you a point for this. And a point for the solution with verification. Okay, so that's where your points came from, showing all that work and with some sort of explanation. Alrighty, let's move on to part B. To make f continuous at x equals 2, f of 2 should be defined as what value? And justify your answer for two points for this part. Okay, here's my calculus thinking, my justification. For f to be continuous at x equals 2, we need f of 2, the function value at 2, to equal the limit as x approaches 2 of that function. Okay? We need to find this. What is? the limit as x approaches 2 of that function. Okay, let's plug in our function f of x. Since, okay, we'll find the limit as x approaches 2 of that function f of x to be the limit as x approaches 2 of plug in your a, plug in your b value into that function f of x. Alrighty, all over 2x squared minus 8. This factors to 2 times x squared minus 4 and now I can rewrite that limit as x approaches 2. I'm going to factor numerator and denominator. Pause and factor that if you haven't. Uh, let's see, you got one point for this limit notation, which some of you are missing, that you needed that limit notation in here. All right, pause and factor if you have not. Okay, numerator factors. Factor out the 2. Denominator factors. There's where my removable discontinuity was. What I'm left with, I can plug in x equals 2. So if I plug in x equals 2, that's 12 minus 1, which is 11. Plug in x equals 2. 2 plus 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. And that limit as x approaches 2 of that function is equal to 11 eighths. So f of 2 equal to 11 eighths would make f continuous at x equals 2. Okay, so again, you got an answer, a point for this answer with justification. So you need that calculus explanation as well. All right, so again, don't be discouraged if your solutions did not look like this. We have weeks to improve on our explanations, our justifications. Alrighty, so there's the two points for part B. We're improving our skills over the next couple weeks, and we have some time to do it. Alright, uh, let's read part C. At what value of x does f have a discontinuity due to a vertical asymptote? And give a reason for your answer. Okay, from part B, trust your instincts. We have a vertical asymptote at the x value that makes that denominator undefined. So we know that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. Okay, so we remember that. We have a vertical asymptote after we remove, get rid of that removable discontinuity. We will have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. I'm providing the AP solution how they phrased this carefully. The graph of f has discontinuity due to a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. We know that. Their explanation was, notice, the denominator is equal to 0 when x is equal to negative 2. So that gives me a vertical asymptote. But the numerator... is not equal to 0 at x is equal to negative 2. Let me go back to our previous work in part b. So notice that negative 2 gives me a 0 in the denominator, hence a vertical asymptote, but not a 0 in the numerator. So it's not a removable discontinuity like this one. It is a non-removable discontinuity. 
and that gives us a vertical asymptote. All right, and that was a one-point part C, and that's how they explained it and justified. Again, thanks for tuning in. That wraps up the Unit 1 free response questions 1 and 2. Alrighty, thanks for practicing.